Hello and welcome. It's the second day of fall. I've got a fallish top on. And someone recently had asked me what yellow or vanilla cake recipe do I use for the cake layers in the chocolate icing video and the caramel cake video. Well, I use either one of two things. I use Duncan Hines cake mix. It's not just cake mix. This right here is the sugar and the cake flour. I also have this. I always use this for my pound cakes, my scratch made pound cakes. Um, and at times when I feel like a special recipe calls for it, I use their one, two, three, four cake recipe um, on the back of it for my yellow cake. And I have a couple of exceptions that I make to it because I make it my own. Then this is what I always tell you guys, do you. Do what you feel comfortable doing. You have to try and you have to taste it and decide what you want to do for yourself. Okay? Happy fall, y'all. God bless you. Please enjoy this recipe and let it be your go-to for all of your yellow or vanilla cakes that you need to make. Okay? Thank you. This already has the sugar and has the cake flour in it and has the vanilla and the leavening agents and things. To that, I add one small package of Jell-O pudding, the 3.4 ounce, and I add these together in the mixer first and blend the dry ingredients. To that, I add three whole eggs and one extra egg yolk. I add four tablespoons of butter melted and a third a cup of vegetable oil. This adds richness. This helps with the moisture. Um, and then I add a cup and a fourth of whole milk. So I also add an extra half a teaspoon of vanilla, even though this, this has season, you know, flavoring in it. Um, I like the really good vanilla. So there's a half teaspoon of that. So what I'm going to do now is get started mixing the dry ingredients. Uh, the pudding mix and the cake mix are mixing. And after they're thoroughly incorporated, I stop the mixer and I add in the three eggs plus the one extra egg yolk. And I add in the third a cup of vegetable oil. One and a fourth cups of whole milk. And the extra half a teaspoon of vanilla but I wait on the butter just a few minutes. I want to incorporate the eggs really well, then I'll add the butter. I don't want any kind of, if you've warmed it in the microwave to melt it, I don't want the eggs to be hit with any kind of extra warmth. And I just kind of pull that up to medium speed. We're going to use a spatula to clean off the beaters because the dry will be up on the beaters, if, especially if you use one with this blade attachment like I do. And we're just going to scrape down the sides. And always important to scrape the bottom. Because it will get to the bottom. And then you'll be putting it into the cake pan. You're like, oh, this didn't mix in. So go on and take it from me. Scrape it everywhere. This is the only downfall I don't like about these mixers. But if you're doing it with a manual mixer you have to stop and scrape as well okay now i'm going to add the melted butter which was four tablespoons or a half a stick and we're going to start that on low until that's incorporated then i'm going to do it up on to medium which is about in between a four and a six let that go for about a minute and a half. Okay, I just finished greasing three cake pans with my cake release, and there's a video for that. My cake release for the cake pans, it gets every layer out beautifully and evenly. And you can watch that video. Uh, I'll po post the link in the description. And what we've got here is a scale that actually the mechanism pulls out and I have them converted to kilograms so we can get 
an accurate count of the weight of how much batter goes in every single layer. Now, I hit the zero because I want to make sure it's zeroed out with the pan on there. And I usually go, if I'm doing three layers, I go to about 350 on each one. That's going to be about 350, 358. So I'm going to move that to the side, bring that one. And these pans have a little bit of difference to them sometimes, one to five, you know, kilograms. But this one's perfect. So I'm going to do 350 in this one. Well, that one actually went 364. If it goes over a little bit, that's fine because what's going to happen is we're going to end up with extra batter we've got to use anyway. So here is 272. We're going to 350. I'm going to probably stop when I get real close there. All right, 345. All right, that's 364. But I've got a little bit left in there, so I'm going to divvy it out on the other two cake pans till I get them about even within five kilograms of each other. I've got all three of them between 368 and 370. We're going to even them out now. I just take a regular teaspoon and pull it all to the sides and then I even it out with a little zigzag pattern to make sure there's no highs or lows on either side and I do it back the other way. Same thing until I'm satisfied that it's smooth and kind of even because it's going to melt and even out. I have smoothed out all three of them. And let's talk just a second about temperature. I have put it down to 325 because these are dark coated pans. They will cook faster. And most every cake recipe you see is going to be around 350. I cook it at 325. It cooks up better. They're moister and they don't burn. Here are the three of them in the oven. I'm going to put it at 325 and I'm going to check them in about 18 minutes. And that, my friends, is what you want to see. The edges coming out from the sides. And if you just lightly press on this, it bounces right back up, okay? Um, I'm gonna let this cook about one more minute and I'm gonna throw my convection on because that didn't bounce back quite as much as I wanted it to. Hold on. I just removed these from the oven. They cooked a total of about 22 minutes. Um, let's see. Do you see how now they spring right back? Whereas before they left a few indentions. Um, so it didn't take but just another minute or so. And what I'm gonna do is let them stay in these pans and kind of they contract because of the air te temperature and the temperature that's going down, it will hold together better. And when you turn it out on the cake rack, it will be more stable and you will have less of it going through the grids. So you want the tops to just cool for just a few minutes. Probably about five. It's been five minutes and I'm turning them out and you can see how nice and even they bake using that cake release and it comes out like a breeze. What we're going to do at this point is let them totally cool. And then at that point, you can choose which one of my delicious icings you would like to use. I've already put up the homemade cooked chocolate frosting. I have put up the caramel frosting and I need to put up my chocolate buttercream frosting. That's really good too. After they're completely cool, you can use a serrated bread knife and split them into six layers and use, uh, make that a prettier, you know, serving cakes. A lot of people are impressed by six layers and it's what you want to do. Um, you can bake this recipe in two pans, in three pans, or you can bake it in three pans and split it and do six layers. So I hope you truly enjoy this. This is a very versatile recipe and it's extremely moist and delicious. Or if you've got extra time and if you feel like it, you can do the Swans Down one, two, three, four cake and substitute one stick of butter for a half a cup of oil okay that's my let's see what else did i say that i did differently two cups of sugar three cups of flour four eggs one cup of whole milk 
Um, do not use low fat or skim in this. Go on, use, if you're gonna make it a cake, use whole milk. Um, three teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt. I do one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract and I leave the almond extract out. Sometimes if I'm doing a pound cake, I'll use the almond extract in that, in addition to the vanilla, but not for my basic vanilla cake. So it's up to you. The debate rages on. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna be total scratch? Or are you going to start off with a shortcut? And all this is replacing is the leavening agents and the sugar and the cake flour, okay? Because you're adding the rest of the rest of it. Um, so it just depends. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like, share, subscribe. And this is a heck of a great cake recipe. Um, try it for yourself. Cook a cake for your neighbors, for your grandma, for your family. Enjoy.